about the harmonies on page two of the um, Invention 13 and how I come to the conclusion that I'm in various keys. Uh, first of all, if the piece is in A minor, which it is, the key signature is no sharps and flats and anything that's added inside of the score, like if it were the harmonic form of A minor in a particular phrase, the G sharp goes inside the score because the key signature is still considered no sharps, no flats. In the first beginning of the uh, invention, they have to put the G sharp in, therefore. Now when you put the G sharp in a harmonic minor, it means if you play the scale on every degree of A minor, you will see what happens. The three chord has a G sharp, and that makes this an augmented chord. The two major thirds make an augmented chord. The four chord is minor. The five chord will introduce the G sharp. And the dominant, the fifth chord, is the dominant on the fifth degree. That's always a major chord, you need to know that. The sixth chord is a major chord in the minor key, because using the harmonic form, and the seventh chord is diminished, two minor thirds, and then tonic. So we need to know that. We need to know that's why there's G sharps in there. But that's not your question. Your question was on page two, what happens? On page two, you'll notice an F sharp is put in. Now if an F sharp is put in, we need to know within what chord that F sharp is. Now, leaning into it is this chord. We don't know anything about the key until we know what comes after it. What comes after it is the D major. And then what comes after it is G major. That tells me right away that's a cadence in G major. It has the F sharp. It also has the two chord. We won't know that unless we hear what's next, because that's gone to a five, and it's gone to a one. Now, I said this was not a five, seven, because this five chord will go to C major. But if it were C major, and it is, we would think that the five chord can't have a sharp on it. In C major, there is no F sharp. That means the dominant seven in C major is not G, B, D, F sharp. It's G, B, D, F. But the composer chose to draw our attention to that G, B, D, F sharp chord by expanding that interval from the D to the F to D to F sharp. That's going to pull more effectively to another G. It's going to pull to a G. That doesn't mean the G is going to be a tonic chord. It means that the G is going to be part of the C chord. There it is. Now it would be probably more understandable if, if it was that. That's the cliche. The G7 is part of the five chord of C major. That means it can't have an F sharp. You have to think of what's coming next. This stretches things a little, so you perk your ears up a bit. But still, you're going to see major there. So, so far, 2, 7 in G major, 5, dominant of G major. G major, but now in a 7 that's, that is F sharp, so it pulls toward that. It could have also been that, but it wouldn't have been as effective for the composer to put in F natural. This still brings us to that. Okay, there's the C chord. Now comes, suddenly, a whole different tonality. This happens to be a dominant seven. It could be of, it could be of E major, or it could be E minor. Now, E major would make no sense to listen. You have to listen, you have to use your ears. It's really E minor, but you know what? Here he goes again, creating deceptive resolutions. He does not go to E minor. He, I told you he goes to A minor, but that E is the critical note. The C sharp goes to the E where it falls under it, happens to be an A minor chord. An A minor chord, now in the key of E minor, the A minor chord is the four chord. So he really effectively went five chord to four chord. You have to write down E minor in your notes. You have to keep writing down how quickly he's passing through these different keys. Okay, so it goes to the four chord, but then he puts a seventh on it. Whenever you put a seventh on a chord, it pulls somewhere else. It pulls you somewhere else. It's unstable. And where he pulls us now is to a B minor. E minor, write it in. Very jazzy when you listen to that. That's a B minor chord. And now you could say it's a G7 chord, but not with what we're 
used to. We're used to that. He keeps that F sharp, and he goes again to the four chord. Now this is the two chord. Forces with the ear and the theory go together. Okay, so I, I, I need to know this why, how I resolve these down under tension. section because he just keeps on compounding those sevenths and those sevenths are deceptively 
not resolving where we want, so they're deceptive. They're not resolving coming to rest. They're putting another seventh and another seventh and so forth. It's very hard to explain this and encapsulate years of theory into one, you know, it, it's hard to do this. It's The study of theory is very layered. You have to learn a lot of things before this becomes comprehensible.